Welcome back to Griddle Cook Eat More. Today, we've got something different for you. We're not cooking. Actually, I just purchased a new griddle. Uh, it's a Loco 36 inch griddle, uh, which I'm gonna skip. Basically, today we're gonna show it off uh, and we're gonna compare it to the Blackstone griddle that I have. It's an older 36 inch, but, uh, but we're gonna kind of put them side by side, kind of go over the features on that for the Blackstone and talk about some of the newer Blackstones too. Uh, just to kind of give people an idea you know, the differences between it and, you know, all that good stuff. So, give us a few minutes here, we're gonna get set up and we're gonna start going over it. All right, here's a little closer look at the, the new 36 inch Loco. So 36 inch wide, real similar. I think it's almost identical size top uh, to the Blackstone. Probably the main difference between this and Blackstone's is it's got, as you can read right there, the maximum temperature control. So you can set the temperature in 25 degree increments and this griddle maintains that heat. It's got a temperature gauge, I guess, or, you know, thing that the griddle sits on in each zone. And it'll, uh, it'll kick the burners on and off uh, to, to keep the temperature where it needs to be. And then one thing you do got to do with this grill over Blackstone's, you do have to plug it in. Uh, it's got a, a cord, so you got to plug it in and operate that part of it. So here they are sitting side by side. Uh, first things I noticed off the Loco, which I didn't really realize that when I, I looked at it at Ace Hardware uh, in person, I kind of noticed, but it definitely sits a lot taller than Blackstone's do, and you, you can kind of see it here. Um, that griddle's probably, I don't know, I'm going to say about you know, four or five inches taller, higher up off the ground. And if you look, you can see it's got some huge wheels on it, which kind of partake in that. So it's got some big, nice wheels, rolls around easy, where the Blackstone's it's got those just your little basic uh, caspers on there. Um, so that's the first thing I noticed on there, which I kind of like because I don't like the, you know, I like it being taller. And I do have a, an older 28 inch griddle, which even sits lower than the 36 inch. So, um, so I always preferred the 36 over the 28 just because it sat higher. And then now this one even sits higher. Now the newer Blackstones, this is a little bit older one, but the newer ones, they got the shelves that are up top or up higher to the griddle and then they also fold down. This is the older style so these ones don't fold down. Now on the loco those will you pop them up and you fold them down so they're fold down so for storage for people. So the loco you're going to probably be more compared to like a, a pro series or you know one with a cabinet. Um, doesn't have the drawers like the the pro series have but uh, it's got you know it's got a cabinet so your propane hides in the inside whereas the uh, you know, the standard style Blackstone, even the new ones, the propane sits off to the side there. So, hides it, looks a little better. And one reason I wanted to get a new grill, we're gonna uh, be redoing our, our deck or pouring a concrete patio or something like that. But anyways, um, wanted a nicer looking grill to sit on there. So, this crappy asshole Blackstone fits our crappy asshole deck that we got right now. So, it's a good match for now. But once we get a new deck or patio or whatever we're gonna do, um, this will, this will be a little more, uh, a little more pleasing to the eye. So, and then this this black stone and from here probably didn't look too bad, but you get in the sun, it's it's more like a gray stone, so it fades out pretty good if you don't cover them. So, and then as this thing got older, I could give two craps about it. So, I just kept the I got the metal hard cover for it, and then uh, I just throw that on there, and it's good enough. I also take this I would always take this grill a lot camping and different things like that functions and stuff and cook on it. So, and I'll definitely keep it just for that reason, because it's a lot more portable. This thing, uh, the Loco, is not very portable. So maybe Loco in the future will come out with, with a, a more portable one. Uh, but for right now, Loco just offers this 36 inch. They got a two burner, I believe, 26 inch, and then a one burner, 17 inch tabletop uh, griddle. So they got three of them right now. Loco also makes, uh, I guess they're more into uh, boiling pots and stuff like that. They got, uh, you know, Big, uh, big cookers for doing crawfish boils and then fryers and stuff. So that's kind of what they did first. And 
like at Lowe's and Home Depot, you can find some of their pots and burners and stuff. So that's kind of what they're what they they started with and then now they're getting into the griddle game as everybody is because griddles uh, become really popular and we're probably gonna overtake the standard grill market so that's that so so off the bat that's kind of my comparisons uh, just you know to the blackstone and that from a, a visual aspect um, and then on the newer blackstones you can get a hood on there um, which is cool uh, this one's got the hood which I didn't have I did a, a had a 28 inch uh, three burner pro series that was like a Walmart uh, Black Friday limited edition thing. It had a hood on there, so that was kind of cool. But let's uh, take a little closer look at the, at the Loco and, and some of the features it's got. So give it a second. All right, so first thing with the Loco, it's got the hood on there. Now this hood feels Feels a little more sturdy than it kind of felt on some of the newer Blackstones, like at Lowe's and stuff that when I was checking them out. So this one, uh, not that it's the most sturdiest, but it, it seems like it doesn't flex as bad. So seems to work good. So good there. And like I said, the, the side tables fold down. So you just pick it up, drops down, hinge. Another cool feature, it's got trash bag holder. I've never tried it, so we're gonna try it. So there's the bag on it, so a little loose, but probably if you had a little smaller bag or if you, you tied it tight, it would work. Um, this one may fall if we yank on it. So, however, get the right size bag, it'll probably work. Another feature on the other side, it's got hooks on the end of it, and then uh, we're gonna move the camera down. We're gonna show you underneath. Um, it's got a paper towel holder and we'll show you inside the cabinet and stuff like that, so. All right, underneath the shelf, this side, it's got a paper towel holder. This folds up and locks in there. I didn't really read the manual. I don't know if it even tells you in there, but this is spring loaded. So I'm gonna assume we're gonna throw some paper towels on there. That is gonna hold my paper towels from rolling. So like that. So I get the little arm there. So there you go, that's pretty cool. So a little spring loaded so it keeps your paper towels from blowing off as, as we all know how that goes. So do you like that feature? So while we're looking at the, if we're standing in front of we're looking at the left hand side over here. So this is your grease trap. Goes in there, grease things up top. Now I will say and I'll when we get done here, or in a minute, I'll, I'll do a comparison to the Blackstone size one. But this is probably the, the biggest disappointment of this grill, is it may be hard to tell here, but this thing's maybe half the size of a Blackstone one. So, but there's, there's a workaround for that, which we'll show you. Also on this side is a little tray there. And then this is your plug. And that goes in right up there. So that's what you plug in to, so you can use that temperature control. And I believe it's got to be plugged in else this thing won't work. So if you don't have power, no bueno. All right, here's what the door is open. So if we look to the right, you can see a little spot down there. Um, that's where your propane tank goes. And then up, up in the corner there. That's your, it's just still tied up, so I haven't hooked it up or anything yet. So if you look there, the little chrome thing there to the back of the hole, actually you can go on the other side, it's got a thumb screw. You can screw that in to secure your tank. Um, enough. See this thing hanging here, so if that hangs in there, you look in there. That's a match holder, and you pull around to that side, and there's a little hole uh, if you're having issues uh, with electric nights, you can uh, uh, light up your burner, get it going. So that's what that's for. Then over here is a shelf inside, and then if you look to the right corner there, you can see the grease, the grease trap right there. So that grease goes straight down there into that thing. So I'll probably get a bigger pan. I got some like third size hotel pans they call them, but you know, for a steam table from the kitchen or from a restaurant, and I'll just set up a, a third size pan there, which will hold a ton of grease, and I'll just set it on that shelf and. Eliminate that thing, see how it goes, and hopefully it drips in it and doesn't make a mess. So that's what I'm going to try because that grease trap's going to fill up fast. 
And over here, we're looking at the corner of the griddle. You can see the little silver, silver piece there on the, on the griddle top leg. So those are adjustable. Uh, put a wrench on it and you can, uh, you can level your griddle out or get it to run one way or another. Or run one way or another. And uh, I don't think Blackstone has anything like that. I'm not sure some of the other brands. I think some of the other brands, maybe that pit, new Pit Boss has got uh, where you can adjust the grill, but uh, that's pretty cool. And the other cool thing, it's hard to see. It looks like wind's not gonna be too big a factor because the, it's got a nice, you can't really see through it. It's got a nice support under there. Runs in there like that, that way. So really wind coming in this way, it's, it's gonna block it. And the same thing up front there. So that sits down low enough where I don't think it's gonna be a too big of a, a wind issue. Cause I know a lot of people have wind issues with the black stuff. I've had other people talk about it, which I've never noticed on my, but any of the black stones I have about a lot of heat coming out of the front of it, where it's like the game stand close to it. So I don't know, mine didn't get that hot. So that supports longer than, or deeper, I guess I'd say, than the black stones. They just have the little angle iron tack welded on the bottom to give it support to help keep the top from warping. So uh, those pieces are a, a lot deeper per se. So kind of cool. So another cool feature I kind of like about it uh, over the black stone. So let's, uh, let me get it spun around here and we'll uh, take a look at the back of it. So here we go, here's the back of it, uh, as you can see. And it's pretty open in the back, um, kind of like the Blackstone uh, Pro Series. And I'm not sure about the new style Pro Series that came out, uh, which I was wanting the new 36 Pro Series, but it's been like six, seven months since they came out. And, and here in the St. Louis area, you have to see one uh, at any of the Walmarts, so, so kind of giving up on that. I may get one eventually when they come out or whenever I see one, so who knows. But I do like the looks of that new Pro Series Blackstone. But so this is pretty open in the back. Now I've seen other people take sheet metal and different things and add it on there to, to kind of weatherproof it better. So, you know, if you're worried about rain or stuff getting in there, if it's on, you know, you got it under a covered deck, but it's to the edge of it and that backs up to it. So I can kind of see, kind of see where people like to get that a little more covered, but that's how it is. And one other thing, uh, that's that set screw in the back of it that's gonna secure your propane tank and if you wanna use it. So I probably won't use it, but you know, the griddle's gonna sit in one spot, so I'm not gonna be moving it around. So who cares about it? Let's get this thing going. First time lighting it, hopefully I don't blow up. So I got my tank situated in there, got it all hooked up, all good to go, sitting in this little hole. All right, so we're gonna get this thing going. So. Push in on the knob. I guess to the left there. So you got, let's get in close here. 275, 300, 325, 350, 3, 400, 450, and sear. So let's get all these on. And hit the ignition. There you go, you just push it once. All right, well this is the first time firing up in one of my burners. Uh, it worked for a second and now it's not lit, so I have to check this out here. Let's give this another try here. So we go all the way to sear, push in to the left all the way to sear, push in to the left all the way to sear, hit the button once, boom, instantly. Now, that one's saying error and it goes off. So I'm gonna have to look into that. That's the first time firing it up, so. All right, let's give it another go here. So this is the culprit burner here. So we're just gonna turn it to low, each one to low, each one to low, fire it up. And we're gonna turn it up here, 275, 275, 275. So then what's cool is that you see in the knob, it goes to reading the temperature. So we're gonna let this thing heat up here. So that error code, I looked up in the book, that was a thermal coupler code that it came on. And then that was when it was on sear, so I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna run it through its paces here. See what happens. Now I heard uh, one of the burners kick off already, the middle one. The two outside ones are, one's 289, one's 285. Uh, this, this one may be messed up, the one I got the camera on, is slowly catching up, it's not working as fast. Now my burner to the right, you can't see it, but it's getting ready to drop, right, getting ready to drop under 275 here, so. See how far it goes before it kicks on. About 272 it kicked on. Heated up pretty quick to 275. I mean, it had a little heat because I fired it up once. 
But let's kick it up a notch. So, boop, wrong way. We're gonna go to 300, 300, 300. See the, the right side. Well, they're all pretty even now. So, right side's hit 300. Middle just hit 300. Uh, and then the camera side, left side just hit 300. All right, let's go up. Boop, wrong way. 325, 325, 325. Kind of cool, you can see the actual temps on it. You really get to see how, how, how hardcore it drops down when you, when you put food on there. Because downfall, I mean, I love these griddles, but they ain't cool like a commercial griddle with a you know, three quarter inch, one inch plate on top. You know, it retains the heat real good. So, uh, so we've hit the temperature on all of them at 325. Let's go to 350. Burner on, burner on, cool. But this one seems to recover pretty quick. I don't know. I mean, I never really timed the Blackstone temperature-wise, but to me, it seems like it heats up a lot faster than the Blackstone, at least to the to that temperature. What it's saying. I'll have to get uh, an uh, infrared thermometer, and we'll have to grab that and go upstairs and grab it and kind of compare it. So, 350, 350, we're across the board. Let's go up. 375, 375, 375. Right side burner's winning. It's already shut off. Middle burner just hit 375, then so did that left burner. All right, let's go up. 400, 400, 400. Right's at 400, middle's at almost 400. 400 in the middle, left one's catching up last. 400, burner just shut off. All right, up 450, 450. A little bigger jump from 400. I don't think it, I don't think it hit the 425. I don't think, let me go back. Now it goes 400, it's gonna go to 450. And from 450, it's gonna to go to sear, to the hottest. And I believe that's close to around 560 or something like that. We'll find out. This kind of makes the video a little bit long, but it's kind of cool to see real time how long it's taken to, to jump up temps. There's only a few videos out there, so when I was researching this griddle, it wasn't you know, much out there to check out, so figured I'm gonna make a video a little, a little more detail. You know, just say basically building it, and seasoning video, and nothing really went over too much about it or how it functioned. So we just hit almost hit 450. We're close, we're close. 450 in the middle. Middle one won that one first. Outside, right outside, and. When the camera's on, those are pretty close this time. 450 on the right, 450 on the left. Seems like this left one loses all the time. All right, let's go to sear. Now I said it sear the first time I fired this thing up and that's when it aired out. So let's see what happens. I'm not sure if it's gonna, I think it'll go back to it. It'll show the temp on it, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, so we'll find out. Let's watch. Right, throw down some smash burgers on this thing or something. Another thing, it kind of looks like, looks like this griddle top may be a little bit thicker than my Blackstone. Um, just not much, but a little bit. Middle, two middle, middle ones are off. Let's wait for this other one to turn off. So this left one may be problematic, I don't know. It did have the air codes at first and hasn't, hasn't caught up to the rest of them. The other ones have cycled on and off already. So, let me run upstairs, I'm gonna grab my infrared and we'll bring it back down here and check some tips. All right, so it looks like on sear, it does not um, show the temp on it, apparently. But let's get our thermometer on there. If we can see, I got my old Blackstone there. It's right on the outside, I'm like 454, 457. 477, 488, 423, real cool on this side, 283, interesting, 329, 428. Now the main burner is to the left of each side of this burner, but they believe it's a U-shaped burner on it. I'm gonna kick it down to 350 and let this thing uh, Let's this thing cool down to the temp there and we'll, we'll see what it is. All right, it's been uh, working uh, 
set down 350, it's kind of cooled down. It's, I don't know, it took about, shoot, five, seven, eight minutes or something like that, but I've been letting it sit and just kind of uh, kick on and off here to see. So let's get the old thermometer. I'm going to probably have to maybe get a better quality infrared thermometer. So this piece of crap. So right there, I'm showing 297. Move over a little bit. And then you can tell this is the hot spot right here by the color of the griddle. So that's climbing up. 309. Move over to this side, 293. We're in 318, 325, 298, towards outside, 287. So, yeah, who knows? But I need to get a better thing too. And, and uh, yeah, this is only the Blackstone $30 deal. So who knows how good it really is. But, Let's, uh, one other thing I wanted to show you real quick is uh, the grease trap. So here's a comparison of the, the Blackstone uh, grease trap to the local one. And you can just see by this picture, well, let me zoom in on it. You can really see, you can really see right there. So you put it spin around side by side. Literally it's like probably half the size when it's filled up, so. Little baby. So anyways, as I talked before, there's a little workaround for that. Uh, put up a bigger pan, try it out. One thing I just noticed, I mean, put my hand right here, it's set at 350. I mean, that, this thing's not even hot right there up front. Um, pretty close to the griddle. So it looks like it contains the heat in there pretty good. Let's check the other side. S same deal, I mean, I can touch that. So may not be, it may uh, not be the water bottle, water bottle, uh, Oh my God, I can't even talk. The old water bottle melter and stuff like that. So, uh, so overall kind of cool. Um, I did read in the manual, it said turn it on low when you start it. So maybe when I was starting it on uh, sear, it was too much flame and uh, it couldn't do a thermocoupler and the Timpsons or whatever didn't work correctly. So, but it seems to be working now. Uh, I guess at 350, I can hear all the burner cycle went on and off uh, to maintain the heat. Uh, and I think as I said before, I'm going to buy a better uh, uh, gun for it or infrared thermometer. Uh, hopefully get a little, you know, see if that makes a difference. Actually see how good that Blackstone one really is. But, uh, but that's it. Um, overall, I, I like it. I uh, can't wait to get it seasoned now. So I got to get it seasoned up and then I'll do a video on seasoning it. And one thing uh, to show you here real quick, this thing's super dark, this top. So, so way darker than like a new Blackstone is, so. But you can kind of, it's hard to see, you can kind of see the, the heat spots a little bit there. But, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get it seasoned up and then uh, go from there. And we'll uh, start cooking on it, and see how it does. But that's it. Um, I hope this is helpful for anybody that's in the market looking for a local grill. Uh, overall, I think it's pretty cool. It looks good, aesthetic. Still, quality is decent. Is it the greatest? No. Probably, I'd say, like a Cam Chef. Probably one of your best, better quality. I think it may be, you know, equivalent to Blackstone, maybe a little better uh, as far as build quality. Now, this thing goes for $799, but you're probably paying most of that for the temperature control feature on there. A lot of people are going to be like, well, it's only three burners, like four, so. But we'll see how it works. Um, and uh, I'll let you know, we're gonna do some cooks on it and all that good stuff and then uh, run it, run it through its face and see how it does. So far, some of the videos I watched people cooking on it, it looks like it does a great job. Seems like it gets hot, it gets hot fast, so uh, we'll find out. But that's it, thanks for stopping by today and checking this video out. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't because I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos on this local cooker. Uh, share this video. If your friends and people interested in it, like it, uh, drop a comment if you got any questions, you know, that I didn't answer for it and maybe I can answer for you. So I definitely appreciate that too. So uh, until next time, which will probably be, uh, we'll do a seasoning video on it. Uh, that's it. Talk to you soon. Bye.